Hello and welcome to our autumn edition of Zeiss Innovation Rocks. At Zeiss Industrial Quality Solutions, we are passionate about quality. We are partnering with you to improve quality assurance and together we are here to shape the market with better solutions, with better products, with the state-of-the-art measurement technology. Time to market is key for everyone in production. Finding effective tools for inspection becomes a competitive advantage and using concepts that enable the utmost flexibility in production processes between different locations and different data streams will put you in the lead. Everything you pick up has likely been through a measurement process. Take this smartphone as a simple example. The shell has functional elements like buttons, a surface, a structure. It is an assembled product with a certain degree of complexity. The electronics inside, invisible to the eye, but from a metrologist's point of view, it is a landscape, a technical maze that follows a strict internal logic. This electron microscope can help you to inspect and analyze it. And we even support you to understand your material used in your processes. Our tactile and optical metrology, however, enables you to measure design specifications and geometries. And if you want to reveal the inside, CT technology is the solution. Layer by layer, micrometer by micrometer. Our industrial quality solutions help you to avoid the smallest deviations. But we also consider the big changes of our times in order to shape the markets together with you. A collaborative effort to create value must consider sustainability today. It is our shared obligation to act responsibly. Many innovations have clear commitment to greater eco-efficiency. Just think of the transformation of e-mobility in the automotive industry. What a mind shift, what a game changer. The reduction of noise emissions in the aviation industry is achieved by new propulsion technologies. This is not just a twist in the turbine, but a leap into a new era. Additive manufacturing is teaching us the versatility of materials and compounds in a completely new way. All of this needs to be thought, designed and manufactured. That is why we are hosting Zeiss Innovation Rocks. We take this time as a challenge. We want to contribute to your success with solutions that grow with your needs. We want to reflect the change you are facing today. We offer to become an integral part of digitalization that facilitate your productivity processes, enable you to utilize new concepts like adaptive machining or digital twinning to optimize your workflow. Join this Innovation Rock series to gain new perspectives, learn from us, learn from others, get ready to take the next step. Enjoy the show and participate in our webinars. We are pleased to have you with us today. Wow, Mark, that's really impressive. Yes, new times require new perspectives. I mean, this truly looks like the next step for Tice Innovation Rocks. Indeed it is, and I can't wait for you to kick off the show. Mark. See you later. Thank you, Mark, take care. Hi, my name is Martin, and I want to welcome you to Tice Innovation Rocks Autumn Edition 2021. I don't know about you, but I always love learning new things, so I'm really excited about this. Today is the first time that we will show four innovation rocks in one episode. So let me start by introducing today's experts. Hello everyone. Hi, Marty. Hello. So we have Petra Schmidt, she's head of X-Ray and she's the one that keeps all the new 2D X-Ray and 3D CT innovations coming. And she's also a very familiar face because she's been with the Zeiss Innovation Rocks since the very beginning. Great to be here again. Good to have you, Peter. And then we have Robert Zanetta. He is head of industrial microscopy solutions. And he's also the guy that helps us visualize and hopefully also understand even the smallest parts. Hi, Robert. Thanks for having me. 
And then we have two of our global aerospace experts. First, we have Antonio Bernardo, who is leading the aerospace division at SAIS. Hi, Martin. My pleasure. Hi, Antonio. And next to him is Lee Griffiths. He is our business development manager and expert of GOMS optical metrology portfolio. Nice to be here. And then we also have Heiko Degen. He's a business development manager for additive manufacturing and also working on the breakthrough of industrial 3D printing in serial production. Hello, Heiko. Hi, Martin. So, we just heard Mark say that SAIS sees the developments in e-mobility, microscopy, aerospace and additive manufacturing as a chance to give customers the quality assurance solutions to meet today's demands as well as be ready for future requirements. So how important is a broad portfolio for that? It's really, it's really important having a broad portfolio and, and this has grown recently with, with GOM solutions, with hands-on metrology solutions really enabling us to, to focus on new segments and also to, uh, to provide the right specific solutions to the customers. And we tend to talk a lot about solutions, products, which is all great, but in the end, size is so much also about the people. So how important is a global network of people for that? It's definitely very important. And that is why we do have more than 60 size quality excellence centers worldwide. And those are equipped with the latest size technologies, but also with certified experts waiting to listen to our customer needs and also to support and to consult industrial companies. And it's wonderful to see all of these beautiful faces, the pictures from around the globe, really fascinating to see. And actually, this global team is really working closely with our customers when it comes to finding new solutions for new challenges. New challenges like they arise now, for example, in the ramp up of battery production for new energy vehicles. Speaking of e-mobility, and I'm a big fan, Petra, how about we dive directly into our first innovation rock? Sure. Let's go. Wow, talk about setting the scene, huh? That really lets you experience going from energy to emotion. By the way, did you know that electric vehicles were even invented before combustion engine cars? No, I didn't. They've just been like really in a niche market for the last 100 years. And now they are waking up like Sleeping Beauty, making a mm -hmm. revolution in the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. uh, either you are left behind or you embrace it and move forward with it. So this is why so many car manufacturers and OEMs are really putting their brain power, their innovation and also their investment into electrical vehicles. And there's a lot of innovation going on. When we see the transition of electric mobility, the battery certainly is one of the key drivers. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to have this car, drive 800 kilometers instead of 600 kilometers without recharging. You need to store more and more energy into the battery module in a safe way. Mm -hmm. But I propose before we go deeper into the battery module, let's have someone join who really knows that stuff. Yes, please. So welcome with me, Albert. Hi. Albert Mo. he is responsible for our battery competence center. Hi, nice to meet you. Albert, Hi, Albert. thanks so very much for Hi. taking the time and being part of our show today. Albert, you talk a lot with battery manufacturer customers. What's the key insight you can share with us based on these discussions? Yeah, sure. So I can give you the very fresh customers' insights this time. You know, the NEV market start to develop and with the unbelievable speed. If you look at on the street, the numbers of the NEV start to grow all over the world. As a core part of the NEV, battery it, quality is not an option for OEMs. It's a must. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad to see that when I talk to the OEMs and battery factors, they start to put high priority on the quality assurance of the battery while they develop the performance. So in the past, we worried the NEV a lot about the distance. Now safety has a higher priority on that. 
interesting. That makes perfect sense. So when we take a look at the battery module, in your experience, what are the biggest challenges that the manufacturers and the OEMs are facing when it comes to battery module inspection? Yes, if you talk to them, they will definitely give you two points, the defect inspection and the speed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a great change in the past on the inspection technology. So the customer is not only looking for the long destructive technology, they are looking for the smaller and smaller size of the defect. So in the past, the defect can be hundreds of microns. Now it's just the tens of microns or even a few microns. Wow, that's really small. Yes, it's, it's really small. But when we talk about the size of the defects and the speeds, we have to also look at the size of the module and the density mm -hmm. because it's a great challenge. So with the technology of the CDP or the new design of the module, people will try to put more and more battery cells inside of it. So the increment of the size and density brings great challenge for the CT. We require higher power, higher voltage to inspect them. Yeah. So thank you very much for these insights, Albert. Thank you, and Albert. Yeah. Thank you very You're much welcome. for introducing the challenge of battery module inspection. And so I'm very proud to present today a new solution for battery module inspection. Wow, that's an impressive machine. So, Peter, why did you name the system Titan? So, Titan stands for this strong, powerful, and also robust partner, basically, our system. You really want to have always right behind you. So, if you could just name two product highlights, what would they be? So, if I have to, if I would have to kind of really nail it down to two, I would for sure go with the robustness as the first one. Mm -hmm. um, when designing the system and also when choosing the components, we put a particular emphasis on their robustness. For example, this is why um, we developed and we also manufacture the X-ray generator really in-house. The second one I always choose is the compact footprint. So um, as we have heard also from Albert that the battery modules might become bigger with more cells into it, that does not necessarily mean that you have more space in your lab or more mm -hmm. space in production. And this is why we try to keep the system as small as possible. So Peter, we've seen it from the outside. How about we now take a look at the inside?
video shows it quite nicely how the uh -huh. Volume X9 Titan is the new measure of battery module inspection. That was really impressive. So how does this relate to e-mobility then? Well, I would say the future of e-mobility is already there and Zeiss is your partner in shaping that future. By the way, did you know that the battery module, the performance also very much depends on the properties of the materials inside of it? That makes total sense. So, speaking of materials, how about we go one level deeper and zoom into the microscopic level? I think it's best to speak to our microscopy expert. All right, let's go. Oh. Hi, guys. I hope you learned something from Petra and Albert. You? Yes, definitely. Hi, Albert. Hi, Martin. You brought a groundbreaking innovation for digital microscopy with you last time. So I'm really excited to see what we can learn from you this time. Yeah, let's do the deep dive into the microscopy world. All right, so let's go. Now, Obert, you are the man to talk to when we want to make the really small parts visible, even the parts that are invisible to the human eye. But that's actually something that science has been doing for quite a long time. Yes, actually 175 years we started building microscopes and by now we have assembled a quite comprehensive portfolio of light, confocal and electron microscopes in our portfolio, serving all major applications in industry. So speaking of applications, what kind of applications are we talking about here? The most important application for our customers is failure analysis and metallography. So using light and electron microscopy you can really determine the root cause of failure if something goes wrong with the material, we can reveal those insights. The second biggest application is optical inspection, documentation and optical metrology. Mm -hmm. So inspecting something with a microscope and then looking for defects, measuring defects and documenting them. Mm -hmm. But we should also not forget technical cleanliness. If you do produce parts, they need to be clean, especially in electronics and medical. You don't want to have particle contamination and we can help in detecting those particles and analyzing them. And last but not least, using confocal microscopy, we can determine roughnesses and surface finish, well, and that's very important, for instance, in consumer electronics. I can imagine. So these are all great products, but what makes the Zeiss Industrial Microscopy Series so unique? What makes us unique is our Zen Core software suite, because this helps to connect all those devices and basically does the job for the customer image acquisition, image analysis, and reporting. Mm -hmm. And we will show now a video that demonstrates how data correlation and data connectivity can benefit you as our customer. Great video. So, 
just to make sure I understand it correctly, after image acquisition, then the real work begins. So why is it important to enable connectivity between the microscopes? It is important because customers usually use more than just one tool to get the final answer. So you mm -hmm. can use a light microscope to first detect a defect and mark the region of interest, but if you need an in-depth analysis, you then take the part and the data to the electron microscope and by having connectivity, we can automatically relocate this region of interest. Just imagine things look completely different under different microscopes. Mm -hmm. So it's a big benefit to go exactly at the position where the defect is and start further analysis. Okay, got it. But how does it help the customer? Can you give us maybe a concrete example? Yes, if you start with an optical inspection on the shop floor, you might identify a defect, but you don't have the time to determine the root cause. Mm -hmm. So you store the data centrally, and then you hand over the part to the quality department that can do further analysis to determine the root cause. Well, and if they find something strange, they might have to hand over the data for an offline evaluation to the R&D department, and they can then see, do they need to adapt processes mm -hmm. or any procedure that they do. And in our globalized world, those departments are at different locations. So you can have a production somewhere and a central R&D department, completely different location at the globe. And having this connectivity, we can provide data flow to all the departments. It's really fascinating. So it maximizes productivity. What are the next steps? Well, customers ask us to go even beyond, and this is fully automating those workflows. Mm -hmm. We realize automation by using artificial intelligence. And this can tremendously increase productivity of our customers. Wow, I love AI. But can you be more specific? What do you mean by tremendously? Tremendously means we can already automate the image acquisition. So using AI, we can automatically find the region of interest. Mm -hmm. And then from this region of interest, we can also use artificial intelligence to do image segmentations that today only humans could do. And based on the segmentation, we do the analysis and the reporting and provide the data that they need for accelerating their decision making. And finally, this means we can provide for you automated microscopy workflows and combine them in a one push button solution. Thank you, Robert. This was really tremendously interesting. Now, we talked a lot about products and solutions, but size is about so much more. Curiosity, passion, and responsibility for the environment are core values for size and have been so for quite a long time, 175 years to be exact. So let's take a look at what this means today. We understand that growth is only possible in an intact environment that is open to innovation. Therefore, sustainability shapes the way of working and approaches in all the size segments. Long-term thinking includes thinking beyond one generation only. This is our approach since Carl Zeiss founded the company 175 years ago. With our technologies, products and solutions, we influence the life of people for many years. And we are fully aligned with our sole owner, the Carl Zeiss Foundation, that sustainability is essential for the future of humankind. A sustainable value chain is part of our DNA at Zeiss Industrial Quality Solutions. It is key to a positive and profitable development of our customers' business, our own company growth, and the well-being of the society. We aim for green power supply by 2022 and for CO2 neutrality in all our own activities by 2025. Today, we develop three dimensions of sustainability. First, we are shaping a sustainable supply chain on our own and want to become CO2 neutral. Second, we integrate sustainability directly into the product creation right from the early stages of product development. And third, we want to help you to improve your own carbon footprint by reducing scrap through optimized quality solutions and more accurate measurements. 
We are driven by curiosity, passion, and precision. We are shaping markets together with you. We will discover and detect. We will be ready to meet future demands and challenges. Progress is our nature. We just heard how important sustainability and corporate social responsibility are for ZEISS. And in our next walk, we'll be addressing metrology solutions in the aerospace industry. And I'm really interested in learning the perspective of our two global aerospace experts. Antonio, Lee. Hi. Hey, Martin. Hello. So where do you see links of the aerospace industry to sustainability? Well, this is a very, very important topic in the world, especially in our industry. So. How can I say? Sustainability has been one of the major drivers for research and innovation in the aviation industry over the last years. Uh, in reality, the major topic, uh, or the, the primary topic, let's say, is efficiency. Mm -hmm. You know, aircraft efficiency, jet efficiency. This because efficiency allows a direct comparison between the offerings. So just let's make a parallelism with, with the car industry. You know, when we go and we have to buy, for instance, a new car, you know, we always look at parameters like uh, miles per gallon, liter per 100 kilometers. Yeah, avionics more or less works uh, in the same way. Uh, just think, for instance, uh, that the cost uh, of the fuel you know, or the fuel efficiency is an extremely, extremely important parameter for, for avionics. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, if you consider the operational life of a jet engine. This is 30 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. you know? So what appears to be generally irrelevant to us, imagine 0.1% of fuel consumption saving. In reality, it has a huge impact in terms of saving million dollars or CO2 and NOx emissions per year. Yeah, and if I add, you know, progress of the environment and in terms of cost reduction, it's about the innovation in design and also the materials. Why? Well, complex designs, um, making the gas flow um, more optimized around the wings, the fuselage, and, and through the engine in the turbine and compressor. This helps to really optimize for, for these conditions. It improves the fuel consumption. Then there's new materials. You know, new materials allow us to be more lightweight, perhaps increases in strength or temperatures, which again give us these marginal gains, you know, that, um, that really impact the engine in the long term. Mm -hmm. It's not just like a small twist on the engine, you know, these are real step changes that are long standing and will be with us and also driving the future of our hardware and software. Yeah, and the, the impact is certainly impressive. And Antonio just mentioned the, uh, the car manufacturers. So we see that the electrification of the automotive industry has led to quite a few new mobility solutions. Do you actually see similar trends in your industry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we see exactly the same, you know, the multi-copters, drones, urban air mobility, and technological shifts in, in proportion as well. So the engines, um, in the real near term future, we'll see more of this uh, hybrid engines uh, as an example. But also more, more current, we've got the repurposing of aircraft, like this behind you, giving them like a second life, basically. Mm -hmm. Things like being lighter weight, converting the interiors to things like cargo aircraft. And these, these aircraft, they're lasting many years. So, you know, optimizing these further for lightweight designs is really pretty crucial to, to the future of, of the industry. So we do see a technology shift. You mentioned new materials. You talked about how the life cycle of an airplane can be prolonged. So how does SAIS then serve the customer for these changing demands? Well, SAIS is a company at the cutting edge of technology. Okay, mm -hmm. So we want to shape the future of our aero industry together with our customers, no doubt. No. Mm -hmm. Probably what, uh, how can I say, uh, it appears not always obvious is that we have partnered with aero customers for decades, uh, offering solutions, you know, to optimize measurement, uh, saving time, of course, you know, optimizing cost. 
And well, now we are together with GOM. I mean, since GOM is part of our family, we are even stronger. So I'm pretty convinced that the partnership between SAIS and GOM is the strongest and the most complete offer that customer can find on the market today. Uh, just think about the um, joint application now, now paired with our uh, broad, combined, uh, dedicated portfolio. I mean, this is an excellent offer, okay? Uh, and this adds a huge value to any stage of the main manufacturing uh, processes in aviation. No discussion for me. Yeah, e exactly. The, the strength really is with, with the combination of the GOM portfolio, the hands-on metrology, it really completes the, the high-end tech. You know, we've got computer tomography, optical 3D metrology, microscopy, coordinate measurement machines, and this, this digital thread, this is like the, the seamless management throughout manufacturing. That's, that's what we really bring together. Mm -hmm. Seamless, I like that. So you, you mentioned the, the data management. So when we, when we talk about the data management as a key topic, what do you think is the, the competitive advantage for size? Yeah. Well, we've, we've brought one example with us today. You've got here um, the Atos 5 for mm -hmm. airfoil, um, and as the name suggests, this is a sensor developed entirely for this industry. Mm -hmm. It's a little over two years old, designed especially for blade and blisk inspection processes. Uh, but you know, why, why do I make the connection to data management? Well, that's all about gathering data. So with this sensor here, we gather extreme amount of data in a really small amount of time. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a couple of minutes to measure a typical turbine blade, less than an hour for measuring a blisk. And what this does is creates a complete digital copy mm -hmm. of the part. Why is that important? Well, first of all, you carry out the very traditional quality checks. So for fit, form, function of, of the product. And then you've got the digital copy and by creating this time and time again through the product's life or through the product's manufacture, you really are data rich then, being able to make these informed decisions about your manufacturing process and even like revolutionizing design, you can you know, make decisions that you couldn't otherwise make before. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, uh, let, let me add that we offer a strong analysis tool, uh, just to mention the last one, you know, go and blade inspect. This has been launched this year, just in August. I mean, this works perfectly with our optical systems. Uh, or GOM volume inspect that is completely integrated on our computer tomography. But we will see this in our first webinar later. Uh, what else? Uh, for sure, PyWeb. No, PyWeb is a scalable reporting and statistical analysis tool uh, able to transform measurement data into meaningful results at all levels in an enterprise. So from the operator interface to top management. How can I say it? I mean, to sum it up, you know, we want to be sparring partners for aero manufacturers. That sounds great. And you just mentioned the webinar. Do uh, you also have a second webinar, I heard? Yeah, we absolutely do. Um, but I think Antonio was going to talk about the first one in more detail then. <laughs> 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 well, in reality, uh, we pick two topics for our webinars. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is mainly what we believe we can show our ability uh, on data management, speed, efficiency, measurement, accuracy, precision, and so on. So, our core business. Now, uh, dealing with complexity, in our opinion, can be shown definitely on the turbine manufacturing process. And therefore, we picked three relevant steps uh, where we show computer tomography, then an optical system like this in conjunction with uh, an automatic loading system, and then you know a coordinate measuring machine uh, ready to work in the shop floor environment directly. And this is the major content of the first webinar. Wow. And for the second webinar, we're looking at our new smaller portable solutions from hands-on metrology namely the T-Scan Hawk. And this is used for maintenance, repair, and overhaul for the day-to-day -day challenges of the in-service aircraft. In particular, for dents, um, we're looking at hail, lightning strike, mm -hmm. uh, damage from ground support equipment. At the same time, we've got a customer story from China uh, for the interior inspection. And this is new manufacture on the aircraft, essentially. Reverse engineering the interior for use again, you know, the repurposing that we discussed earlier. 
and this is playing a crucial role, especially for like the additive manufacture of the new parts for the mm -hmm. aircraft. Wow, so there's a lot more content coming. Thank you so much, Antonio and Lee. Now we learned there's a technology shift in the aerospace industry that brings with it new and more lightweight materials. And this in part will be made possible by additive manufacturing. With me now is our resident expert for additive manufacturing. Hello, Heiko. Hi, Martin. And I see you brought a guest. Yes, I brought Christoph from the company Toolcraft, which is a leading service provider in Germany for additive manufacturing with a good footprint in aerospace industry. Thanks for having me. Hi, Christoph. So what are the biggest challenges in additive manufacturing? And I got to ask, white size? <laughs> of course. As an additive supplier to the aviation industry, we have identified four main challenges for the quality assurance. Mm -hmm. First, we have to get the approval from the customer, from the OEMs, as well as industrial standards like NETCAP. Mm -hmm. For that, we need an equality assurance along the whole process chain. The second point is we need to control the parameters that define the quality of the part. Mm -hmm. That, for example, is the powder, uh, the laser parameters, the heat treatment, and the surface finish. As a third point, we really need to have a continuous data management along the whole chain. Mm -hmm. It ideally allows us to use one software where the data is collected and also understands the data from previous steps. As a fourth point, we need to clearly understand each step of the process to give our customer a best price solution and to get to the limits of the technical feasibility. And for that, we are using Zeiss's help. Mm -hmm. We had exactly these things in mind when we were coming up with our Zeiss AM solution. So we were taking advantage of our broad portfolio and um, coming up with a holistic solution which is really covering each step of the additive process chain. And at the same time, we were making it in a way that it is flexible and scalable. So you can put together the building blocks that you need in order to derive the insights that you're interested in. And then in the end, bring all the data together in one place. So I understand the steps. Let me go back to the beginning. Uh, you mentioned the powder, Christoph. How do you ensure the quality of the powder? To be cost competitive, we need to reuse the powder. Mm -hmm. And every time before we reuse the powder, we use a light microscope to actually analyze the powder and check if it's still up to the standards. Mm -hmm. And if you would want to know even more about your powder, you could go into an electron microscope and, for example, analyze each particle for example, for roughness, which is um, impacting flowability, or even looking at the chemical composition, because it can always happen that in the production process you get some contamination and you have other materials in your powder that you don't want to have there because it influences the result of your printing job. And so once you have the powder assured, um, you're going into the actual printing. So you're bringing the powder in your machine and the actual additive manufacturing starts. And in the end, this is a very complex process because you're creating the material and the geometry at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to supervise the process because there's a big um, level to improve the yield of the machines and to make sure that you get good parts out of the machines. And so in Zeiss, we're working strongly on developing an in-process monitoring solution, which is really gathering inspection data while the machine is working. And then when you get the parts out of the machine, they are still on the build platform. And um, usually then they undergo heat treatment and are being cut off the build platform. But oftentimes the geometry that you get out of the printers is very accurate to what you develop, for example, in your CAD. But then when you cut them loose and when they go into heat treatment, they start warping because there's a lot of internal stress in the parts. And then they deviate stronger from what you actually wanted to have. And this is showing why it's so important to look at the entire process chain and not just at intermediate steps because the results there could be misleading. Mm -hmm. that, that makes total sense. So when I then remove the part from the build plate, do I have the final component? Um, not yet. In consumer 3D printing with um, plastics, you would, it would be like that. You take it out of the printer and then you're done. But in industrial 3D printing, we have to really verify that what we printed is 
the, uh, meeting the quality that we were intending to produce. And so from there, we now have to undergo several steps in the quality assurance, with the first one being to make sure that there are no internal defects inside the parts. So for example, it could happen that you have pores inside or you have a lack of fusion where the layers are not really connected with each other. And of course, if you want to detect things like that, the means of choice is a CT to look inside. Mm -hmm. And then the second important thing is looking at the material characteristics, because for example, if you take a casting alloy and you process it in an additive machine, it's still the same alloy, but um, the material structure that you get, that you produce, is very different from what you would get in casting. And so also the material properties are different. And then again, it's um, light microscopy or electron microscopes, just like Robert described to us earlier today, that you use in order to characterize the material going down to the grain structure and really finding out what do the building blocks of my material look like, which in the end impact my part properties. It's very fascinating to see how you can look inside the product. So after looking inside, how do you check the outside, like the surface or geometry? Very good question, yeah. Actually, 3D scanning is a very good solution for this. And that's also the reason why we have my colleague Florian with us today. He is from GOM and he's an expert for 3D scanning and also for polymer additive manufacturing. Hi, Florian. Hello, thanks for having me here. But before we go there, actually, Christoph, isn't this the same system that you have? Yes, correct. We have a very similar setup in our manufacturing process. We use it to scan the part, to scan the additive manufactured surfaces and the machine surfaces. And the most important thing for us is to get a correlation between AM and machine surfaces and make sure they are within the tolerance. Heiko, you mentioned all the different steps in the process chain and you're obtaining a huge amount of data along this process chain. What do you do with all this data? First of all, we bring it together all in one place. So we have kind of a digital representation or a digital twin of mm -hmm. the additive manufacturing process. And then of course we want to work with the data and find out how these bits and pieces can reveal insights that we don't have without them. So for example, finding correlations about how do the powder properties impact our part quality? How um, do they impact the defect density inside our parts? Or we even have a solution or a size parameter where we can derive correlations or use correlations in order to optimize the printing parameters inside the 3D printer. But we're going to go into more details about this when we are having our webinar about Metal AM on the 10th of November. Florian, we talked a lot about metal additive manufacturing, but when I think about 3D printing, I think about plastics. So how important is plastics additive manufacturing? Additive manufacturing with plastics or polymer is a real big thing. They use different technologies and they can print even flexible solutions like this one. Mm -hmm. So, but what this is, we show in our upcoming webinar, November the 17th. We visit one of our customers, RPM, a rapid product manufacturer, and they show us how they use the GOMScan Cobot and the Atos Q as a central element for their quality assurance. And they show us how they speed up their processes with workflows inside the GOM software and, of course, the advantages of digital twinning. I hope to see you all inside the webinar. See you there. So there's a lot more exciting content coming. Thank you very much, Florian. And thank you, Christoph, for taking the time. And, of course, thank you, Heiko. How about we join the others now? Sure. <laughs> so we heard about new perspectives. And we learned about new potentials for the mobility industry, microscopy, the aerospace industry, and additive manufacturing. So let me ask you a final question. What is your new perspective for the year 2022? Well, I truly believe that with our holistic solution, we can really make a significant contribution to enable more and more additive manufacturing serial applications, and really all the way from powder to performance. For me, the broad portfolio, our dedicated teams, uh, generating the trustable results at the right cost and the right speed. Oh, therefore, bringing precision at all altitudes Lee, is not just our motto, it's our promise to the aerospace industry. Yeah, and from now on, we are not just providing a big portfolio of microscopy solutions, but also a harmonized software suite. And this is enabling you to do correlation, connectivity, and automated workflows, enabling your faster decision making. Now is the time to ramp up your battery production. And Zeiss is your partner for quality solutions all the way from energy to e-motion.
That's wonderful. Thank you all so much for taking the time to share your expertise and your insights. This was Zeiss Innovation Rocks, the Autumn Edition 2021. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and goodbye. Hey, good job, guys. Go, guys. Wonderful. Great job. Very good show. Very good. Oh, everyone, I made it. I'm here. I'm late. I think I'm late. I missed the show, but one thing I won't miss is our six webinars, which start right about now. Uh, be there, be square, because I'm going to be there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go right now. We'll see you.